I'm at the headquarters of a company that might just be about to put this country on the supercar map. Donkervoort was founded in 1978 when Joop Donkervoort built his own version of the iconic Lotus 7. Since then, the Donkervoort car has evolved so far that in 2011 it produced a racing version that won the gruelling Dubai 24-hour endurance race. It put the lessons learned from racing into a brand new version of the road car, the D8 GTO which I'll be testing at Zandvoort, Holland's former Grand Prix track. But first, some introductions. At first glance, it appears out of this world, but take a closer look and you can see traces of the Lotus 7. It's got a long bonnet with headlights either side, outboard mounted wheels and two seats in the cabin, which are set all the way back. Basically, it's a recipe for a big dose of fun. Like the Lotus 7, the D8 GTO has been designed to weigh as little as possible, being made almost entirely out of carbon fibre. The only thing that isn't lightweight is the price, £98,000. It's more than seriously hardcore rivals like the KTM Crossbow R and Aerial Atom. On paper, the stats are even more impressive than its ridiculously quick competitors. It's got a 2.5-litre engine, borrowed from Audi, that's got 380 brake horsepower. This car takes 2.8 seconds to get from a standstill to 62. That is quick. I've arrived at Zandvoort. This fantastic track is the epicentre of motorsport in Holland. It opened in 1948 and was the home to the Dutch Grand Prix from 1953 to 1985, when Nicky Lauda in a McLaren beat his teammate Alain Prost by just two tenths of a second after a 70 lap race. Today, it's used for the likes of sports car racing, the German Touring Car Championship, and for me to test Dutch supercars. Donkervoort's motto is no compromise, so there's no ABS, power steering or servo-assisted brakes as the extra weight would have compromised the car's speed. I'm driving this car pretty much with all my upper body strength, turning the wheels coming right from my shoulders all the way down my arms. Into the chicane. Bit too keen on the throttle, the back end steps out. So it's very difficult to be, to sort of give it lovely, great, big, fat power slides. <laughs> the D8 has more power per tonne than a Ferrari F12, so it's no surprise that driving it is such a physical onslaught. <laughs> and it's not just the edgy handling that demands concentration. Audi engine has been tuned to be an absolute animal too. There's a massive turbo wide, but there's not a massive amount of turbo lag. Hit the throttle, the boost bar goes crazy, and I go forwards very quickly. They've done a nice job of it. It's a progressive amount of power that's coming, quickly, but progressively. That continuous power delivery is difficult to achieve in highly tuned turbocharged engines. All too often, the power comes through in one big lump, making the car hard to control. The Donkervoort is a massive dose of rear-wheel drive adrenaline, with handling and power delivery that show some impressive engineering skills, but there's no getting away from its eye-watering price tag. So, is it worth nearly £100,000? Well, there are more refined and more luxurious machines on the market, for sure. But if you value exclusivity, a carbon fibre body, and out-of-this-world performance, then yes, it's worth every penny. Oh, 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 steady, Tim, steady, 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 steady. Ah! Uh... The resto modifications are impressive, but it's not as easy to drive as a current 911.
Yeah, look over your shoulder, come on. Whoa, 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 whoa.